at memgraph.com slash office hours and submit for uh, future sessions. Uh, so, Marco, uh, feedback on the first office hour sessions, session was to incorporate a bit more high-level details about memgraph. So, can you please tell us what memgraph is and how it can be useful to an engineer? So, yeah, uh, memgraph is hybrid transactional and analytical graph database. Uh, that means that it's very similar to any other tra traditional database system. Uh, but in addition to that, e MemGraph offers a bunch of uh, graph analytical capabilities. Uh, so uh, usually uh, use case, which is the most uh, most interesting one, is the one with, where, where you have a bunch of uh, streaming data from maybe IoT devices or uh, various uh, sensors. And then you want to analyze uh, graph aspects of, of that data set. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Others, other use cases like uh, fraud detection or maybe social network analysis or any other uh, the analysis of dependencies between the data points uh, might be interesting. Uh, on top of all that, uh, graph theory offers a bunch of uh, interesting algorithms uh, that could be leveraged to analyze the data set. Uh, and uh, MemGraph tries to be uh, a tool set uh, for, for any developer to explore like the data set and leverage all uh, uh, graph theory analytical algorithms. Uh, what is tricky is when when you need to scale that or so extract a bunch of performance uh, uh, characteristics from the uh, from analysis at that point uh, memgraph jumps in uh, and offers like easy to use tools and uh, and uh, various uh, other other features to support developer in doing that. Could you talk a bit more about the set of tools you mentioned? So yeah, uh, that's an interesting question because uh, when we started, uh, we only had in mind like uh, similar graph queries, uh, but uh, as the time passed, we figure out that it's not enough because uh, when you analyze data uh, in your data science uh, pipelines, for example, uh, analysis could be very custom and very uh, uh, very specific. And uh, to, to do that, uh, MemGraph has to offer more. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, we decided to add uh, something we call query modules. Uh, and that's a very flexible uh, uh, feature, which allows developers to uh, implement their own custom algorithms and custom procedures uh, to be run on top of on top of the graph. Uh, we we decided to use uh, Python for that uh, because uh, people are very familiar with Python and Python is uh, by design developed to be very easy to use and very uh, very very flexible when it comes to fast prototyping. Uh, and that's very good because uh, people can quickly develop uh, new capabilities uh, and then. Uh, when when they hit like a scalability problem or performance problem, then Memgraph also offers a C API, uh, which is much uh, harder to use, but can be leveraged to to squeeze uh, the performance out of the, out of that. And uh, and then again, Memgraph has a bunch of uh, built-in features that uh, can be used out of the box uh, to 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 quickly like analyze data and then also use that also that can be used in production to to run uh, various workloads and to analyze data as fast as possible uh, we received a few questions on the memgraph forum the forum can be found on discourse.memgraph.com 
And the question goes, what is the default username and password for a MemGraph instance? Uh, that's, that's, that's easy. So uh, it's, uh, it's basically it can be anything. So uh, if you are logging in to MemGraph Lab or, or you're using uh, MG Client, uh, the username and credentials field can be whatever. So it can be empty, it can be something inside because that's completely ignored. Uh, once uh, once that that the server receives that and that 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 applies for memgraph community edition uh, in memgraph enterprise edition uh, there there is a check for the user and password obviously and for and all other authentic authentication mechanisms with regards to uh, query languages does memgraph have any plans to uh, support kremlin uh, no no because uh, that's a short uh, answer at this point uh, basically, the decision early on uh, was to uh, was to support a declarative query language because that's something which, which is easier to use for the developers. Uh, plus, uh, query optimizer actually can figure out uh, best uh, execution plan, uh, and uh, that's only possible when you have like declarative uh, declarative language. Uh, and then we decided to use. Uh, uh, open cipher project and uh, uh, constructs from from there uh, that, that that's one uh, uh, reason and the other reason is that uh, gremlin is very tied to tinkerpop stack which is mostly java based and um, we decided to use uh, like interfaces which are uh, language agnostic and that means like open cipher and uh, bolt uh, protocol so it's completely agnostic to any uh, specific programming language, uh, which means that, uh, like, MemGraph could be queried from various programming languages that have libraries uh, built in inside these languages. We also had a question how to install MemGraph on Windows. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, uh, we also talked about uh, la uh, last time about that. Uh, basically on Windows, I think there are two options. So first one is uh, probably Docker. Uh, because it, and it's most popular uh, tool to run uh, uh, Linux software on on Windows, I would say, uh, and that's an obvious choice. Uh, but also there is an option to use uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, because MemGraph as it is now, it's only uh, natively uh, runnable on Linux machines. So uh, Docker or uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, for Linux are options for uh, running MemGraph on Windows. Another question was, does MemGraph support the distinct clause within the count function? Uh, yeah, so uh, the answer to that is uh, is not at the moment, uh, because count and like distinct within count function is kind of specific syntax, uh, and uh, it's possible to rewrite that uh into uh by, by using with statement so you can combine instead of writing count and then inside distinct uh, something uh, you can rewrite that by uh, uh writing with distinct uh some some variable uh, that has to be uh, aggregated and only distinct values have to be returned and then return count that uh, that set so instead of uh, writing count distinct uh something uh a developer should write uh, any member supports uh, with a distinct X and then uh, returning the count of all these uh, variables that are collected by using with. Uh, before we proceed with the next uh, question, uh, you can post your qu uh, questions in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below uh, to stay in the loop. So the next uh, thing is the uh, fun part, the live demo part that you prepared, right? Yeah, so uh, I, I'm going to prepare, uh, I'm going to present uh, uh, breadth first search and uh, uh, shortest path uh, in Memgraph. These are capabilities that are uh, possible to do, uh, possible to run inside Memgraph. Uh, so uh, let me, let me dive in. Mm. Okay, so uh, first uh, I'll try to explain uh, what the depth first search and breadth, breadth first search are. So that's the most common uh, uh, like graph traversal. And uh, the idea with uh, breadth first search is to go into depth first. So uh, first explore uh, 
first try to expand to the most like to the furthest uh, node and then once you reach the target node uh, then you go back and expand uh, further so uh, that's basically the idea with the uh, dfs uh, so that might be tricky because if the target node is uh, far away and uh, not not very close to the, to the source node in that case, it might happen that the query will take a long time. So uh, DFS sometimes uh, has a, a lot, like big time complexity. Uh, on the other side, uh, breadth first search is uh, is similar but different in a way that you are first expand like the query is first expanding to the most uh, to the closest nodes first. It goes uh, the query execution goes level by level. And it's expanding. It is. It is expanding. Uh, uh, like in a, in a front. Like you first visit all the neighbors on the uh, on the path one, on the length one, and then two, and then three. Uh, that might be uh, tricky because sometimes you you and before you reach the destination node, um, you might uh, collect all these nodes uh, in memory. That, and that will take uh, that will take a lot of a lot of memory maybe, and in that case, breadth first search may be may not be the best uh, the best choice. Uh, so to showcase all that, uh, I'm gonna uh, spin up uh, backpacking through Europe dataset, uh, which is available on docs.memgraph.com. Uh, it's a very simple uh, dataset, so it has uh, countries within Europe and uh, cities within these, these countries uh, and uh, each city is uh, close to uh, some other some other city uh, also each city could be inside uh, inside a country and uh, countries between themselves uh, have borders uh, so let me uh, switch to 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 import that so i'm going to try here to run a map graph uh, member of community instance and uh, here in the terminal it says that memgraph is up and running and uh, uh, all these uh, like memgraph has uh, a couple of uh, data sets uh, included uh, in the memgraph package uh, but here I'm gonna try to uh, import uh, queries from here so uh, here I have uh, just as simple uh, text file text file uh, with uh, all the nodes and also uh, these edges. So it's here is close to also border and uh, and everything else. Uh, so let me import that. So now I'm uh, and uh, for the import, uh, member has various uh, ways of importing data. Here I'm going to use mg console. That's a terminal tool to import memgraph, uh, import data into memgraph. Uh, and yeah, that should be it. Uh, now I'm gonna switch to Memgraph Lab. Uh, yeah, just a quick intro. So Memgraph Lab is a user interface used to query, profile, and uh, basically visualize data uh, that is stored inside Memgraph. Uh, so here I'm gonna connect as yeah Memgraph community as I, as I said before. So we don't need username and password because uh, Memgraph community just uh, ignores that. Uh, and I'm gonna connect to the local instance of Memgraph. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there are 92 nodes and 371 edges. Uh, and uh, Member of Lab has a nice feature, which is graph schema. Uh, if I go here, I can generate a graph schema. So basically, uh, it tells it tells you uh, like how the the data layout uh, uh, exactly is. So uh, and what what are the type of edges and uh, labels on the nodes. So that's a uh, Labels and types are standard nomenclature in uh, OpenCypher project, but uh, yeah, here here you can see uh, these these type types these uh, these types and uh, labels. Uh, if I go back to the query section, uh, so uh, I'm gonna switch to queries. So here I have prepared queries. So and maybe look back here. So uh, so this query here. Uh, is just a simple query uh, that will uh, match uh, some of the nodes and edges in the 
uh, in the graph and uh, uh, visualize that on the on the screen. Uh, if I run that, so oh, something is yeah okay. And here you can see uh, like uh, uh, let me zoom in. So here uh, you have like cities like Vienna, uh, uh, Kiev, and uh, other other end countries like Czech Republic, Germany, Luxembourg, and other others. Uh, so basically, it just means the data is inside and it's uh, ready to to be queried. So if I go back to slides, so um, let's say let's start uh, with a simple example. So. Uh, Imagine that we are on a trip from Spain to Russia and uh, we want to cross the least number of borders. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, uh, we, we match a path which has uh, a, Spain, a country Spain on it. And uh, we are expanding here uh, with, uh, through all uh, edges that have borders type. And we are doing that in a BFS manner. So we are doing breadth first search. Uh, and we want to end up in a country called uh, Russia. So, uh, and then at the end, we're going to just return that uh, that path. Uh, so I'm going to take this query and paste it here. So, so here, here I have that query and I'm going to execute that. And as you can see, uh, here, uh, here are Spain and Russia and uh, all borders between between them uh, visualized here. Uh, if we want to do a slightly advanced, uh, more advanced query, so this one is very similar to the, uh, to the previous one, but it just has uh, something which is called uh, like filter lambda. So basically, if we want to have some additional filter on the query, uh, it's possible to write an expression here, and uh, that will uh, that will filter all uh, all parts that are that are not satisfying that expression. Uh, so here in the example, uh, let's uh, find a path between uh, Bratislava and Madrid, but also uh, we want to be able to on on that on that trip we want to be able to pay only in euros, uh, and uh, to do that we have to filter all uh, all uh, vertices that have local currency uh, euro. So let me execute this query. So here it is. And uh, yeah, here I'm going to execute this one. So it's it's a very similar example to the previous one. Uh, just uh, so all, uh, all vertices, uh, like Madrid, have the local currency uh, euro. So we can see that if we uh, explore here on the graph vis visualization in Memgraph Lab. Uh, that's it. And uh, and in addition to uh, breadth first search and, and depth first search, uh, there is also an option to use uh, weighted shortest path. It's a slightly uh, more advanced uh, query because it's not enough just to expand. Uh, a clever algorithm has to take care of weights between between nodes, or in other words, on, on edges. Um, it's a, uh, the algorithm used uh, inside Memgraph is called Dijkstra's algorithm, but uh, it's a, that's a topic for another for, for another video. Uh, for now, I'm gonna just uh, run uh, run weighted shortest shortest path uh, query inside Memgraph. Uh, so. Uh, so to, 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 to showcase that, so here uh, the idea is to uh, go from Brussels to Athens, and, uh, but the idea is to have to do that on a budget. On, and basically the travel between these uh, cities uh, is free because we are backpacking, but uh, it co some like having a, a place to stay, uh, that costed something. And, uh, uh, that means that we have to uh, like get the cheapest stay on each node in the graph or in, in each city that we visit. And additional constraint is that 
uh, we lost uh, our passport and we want to uh, go only uh, through the countries that are in Europe uh, so that we only need like an identity card. Uh, and uh, basically to do that, uh, we just uh, match a pad which starts uh, in Brussels and uh, tra traverses uh, uh, the graph uh, with all edges that uh, have edge type close to. And we are putting here, uh, instead of BFS, we are putting here weighted shortest. Uh, and uh, again, we have uh, a lambda, but this time a lambda tells uh, what is the expression that's going to be used in the cost function. So here, each city uh, has uh, a cost per night uh, here, and that will be uh, used to calculate the shortest path, and the final result uh, will be stored in variable uh, called total cost. So each path uh, will also have a total cost, cost associated with it. Uh, and, uh, and then the, the second lambda here is a lambda used to filter uh, these countries that are not within the European Union. Uh, very similar, this is uh, equivalent to the lambda in the BF BFS. And uh, then we specify the target city and uh, just uh, just return a path and total cost. So I'm going to take the query here and execute that. So that should be it. So yeah, uh, here we are starting from Brussels and then through Berlin, Salzburg, Budapest, Bucharest, Sofia, and then we end up uh, in, in Greece. Uh, mm, here uh, it's a bit misleading because all these edges have a direction, but uh, because memograph is in, in, the way how memograph is storing data is that every edge has a direction and that direction is uh, specified when you import data. Uh, but in this query, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't use direction uh, at all. We ignore that uh, because we don't have here uh, an, an arrow. It's just a minus sign, uh, which means that these directions are ignored. And the uh, memgraph under the hood uh, have both, like both edges have pointers to the, uh, to the neighboring edge, uh, to the neighboring node. So uh, it's just a convention here to draw these directions. But uh, the, the query ignores that at all. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. Uh, if you have any other interesting uh, al graph algorithms that uh, you think might be useful and Memgraph should uh, support, uh, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you, Marco. This has been great, but you're not done just yet. We have a live question. So Noah says, tech looks great. Thanks, Noah. But uh, no one wants to know what is Memgraph best used for? What are some of the use cases that you've seen work well? So, I, there are various use cases, but uh, the best use case is, uh, I would say, uh, the one that has, uh, like, that has to deal with uh, real-time uh, data, which is coming uh, like in, with, with a stream of data, uh, where, where you have like a higher throughput of data coming in. And because uh, like you, you need a system that will uh, deal with that somehow because it's not a trivial thing to do uh, from the engineering point of view because you need to deal with uh, concurrency, locking mechanisms and stuff like that. Um, and then once you have, once you have that, plus you, you need like uh, some graph algorithms to run, to be run on top of that. And that, that might be arbitrary complex. So, uh, BFS, DFS, and weighted shortest path are fairly uh, fairly simple ones, uh, but also you can have more advanced algorithms like PageRank uh, or uh, maybe l uh, uh, weakly connected components, or and there are a bunch of others other alg algorithms like cycle detection and uh, various others. Uh, but uh, yeah, so these are just some of nice, let's say features or uh, nice prerequisites uh, of the use cases, but uh, like, uh, and maybe uh, more, uh, more uh, relevant example would be uh, to have, I don't know, 
recommendation engine when where you have a bunch of uh, data coming in like users are doing something uh, uh, interesting and then you have to process that and offer uh, recommendations in real time but usually users are users are not that uh, you don't have that many users but when you have iot devices or sensors or any other uh, type of data uh, which coming coming in uh, in like larger volumes, then Memgraph is the, the way to go. Thank you, Noah, for the question. This is a really good question. Hope Marco answered uh, it. Uh, actually, Noah has another question. He says, thank you. Can you say some more about the deployment of Memgraph? Where can I run it and what would be best to do it? Um, so, uh, like, uh, recommended way of uh, deploying Memgraph is first of all Memgraph is a server database system, so uh, it's in like the intended usage is to be used uh, on a uh, on a server and uh, to run Memgraph natively, and that's the most uh, recommended way of doing it uh, is to have a Linux machine, preferably without uh, uh, too many levels of virtualization, so that Memgraph can uh, uh, get the most out of the performance. Uh, but yeah, uh, like a server database with uh, Linux on it, and then Memgraph uh, installed. Uh, so, like uh, we 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 do have Debian and uh, Ubuntu and uh, CentOS packages. So all these are, are are great. So and are okay, and are okay to be used. Thank you, Marco, and th thank you all again for the questions. Um, thank you for answering the questions. Thank you all for watching and thank you Noah for posting your questions. The next office hours will be in two weeks. If you have any questions, just go to memgraph.com slash office minus hours there. You can, submit, uh, you can submit your questions. You can uh, sign up for future sessions. And until then, like, share, subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.